I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Mighty name we pray. We come to the word of God and we're looking at God's plan for your own prosperity. God's plan for prospering you. What does he demand of you? What does he want of you? What's he asking of you? So that you will be prosperous. He promised the children of Israel. Give them a lot of promises concerning their prosperity, concerning their progress, and concerning their success. But he gave them the condition. Many years passed by, and they were not fulfilling the condition of prosperity the Lord had given them. And because of that, poverty came unto them. And if there are believers today that are wondering, why am I in this condition? Why am I poor? Why am I deprived? Why am I not having what I ought to have? I look at the promises of God. I match them with my life. There's a wide difference between the promises of the Lord and the situation in which I find myself. The question is why? The Lord is answering that question. Why? The Lord wants us to make a U-turn and to say, the six I knew not before. Teach thou me. If I have done anything wrong, if I have acted in a way that brings defeat and sorrow and a poverty to my life, O oh Lord, I'm willing to change. And when we change, then the blessing of the Lord will be upon our lives in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, reading from verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from mine ordinances, and I'm not kept them. Here the Lord challenged the children of Israel, and the Lord can challenge the whole church today. The church at large, the church in the world, and our church in particular. What happened to the children of Israel is that they brought in a lot of ideas that had not been commanded by the Lord. And then they elevated and exalted those ideas and practices above the word of God. And then as they relegated the word of God to the background, religion still continued. And still following the Lord as they thought, everything still continued, but they were not keeping to the word of God. They relegated the word of God to the background and their tra tradition and their culture. And whatever they wanted, they brought to the forefront. And the Lord accused them and the contentious controversy with them. Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me. The Lord was not giving up on them. On the other hand, the Lord was not yielding to them. The Lord was not saying, okay, that's all right. If you're not going to obey that, what do you want? If this is what you want, I will then return to you. I will do what you want. And then I will have to be your servant. And then you will have to be my Lord. God said, no, not in any way. He said, you will have to return. That's why he calls us to repentance. He calls us to return unto his way. Return unto me and I will return unto you. We take that first step and return unto the Lord. And it says we return unto the Lord. He will return unto us. He says, says the Lord of us. But he said, wherein shall we return? And then he brought out something to them. The place where they had gone away from him. And we can say about a church here too. That in this area, many of us, it's like, oh Lord, give me this and give me this and answer my prayer and prosper me. But we have turned away from the Lord in his prosperity plan. Look at verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But she say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. 
For the children of Israel, it was in their tithes and offering. For us, many people, tithes and offering, time and treasures, skill and ability, we will draw it away from the Lord. Our strength will draw from the Lord. And then every sin that the Lord had given us to honor his name and to glorify him, we take that away from the Lord. And the Lord says, you have robbed me. Then he says, you are cursed in verse 9 with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. And you know, sometimes there are people that follow the majority. And if the majority is doing something, even though that thing is wrong, then they say, the majority cannot be wrong. If the majority is doing it, then I can do it too. But the whole nation was wrong. And the whole nation had robbed God. And God said, even this whole nation, you have robbed me. That millions of people are doing something wrong doesn't justify that thing that is wrong. That millions of people are acting the wrong way doesn't approve that thing that is wrong. All these people, the whole nation, they robbed God. And that a church is doing something wrong does not mean that that thing is acceptable. You know, sometimes you have a whole denomination. That whole denomination doesn't think about what about teaching. When people give their lives to the Lord, they just continue. No water baptism. That the old denomination is abandoning water baptism doesn't mean that they are right. Sometimes it's the Lord's Supper. That the whole church is not taking, uh, taking a care of. That the old church is not doing that doesn't mean that they are right. They're still wrong. And when a whole nation, a whole church, a whole denomination is abandoning something, that doesn't mean that then God is going to say, well, I'll forget about that. I'm not going to talk about water baptism. I'm not going to talk about the Lord's Supper. I'm not going to talk about this or that because the whole church is not uh, doing it. You know, sometimes it's evangelism that the whole church is abandoning. And then they bring in some things into the church. They're not necessarily bad things or wrong things. They're just not in the New Testament. And they put the emphasis on them. And the New Testament does not put the emphasis on them. And sometimes when a church is like that, the church will not know when they abandon the thing that the Lord wants to do. They find Paul and Silas sang. There's no choir in the New Testament. And yet, choir is all right choir is not wrong if we put the choir in the appropriate place what i'm saying is we're bringing the singing we're bringing the choir and then we relegate evangelism to the background and then the singing which is not in the new testament becomes the in thing the thing becomes the appropriate thing and becomes the greatest thing in the church and the evangelism becomes something that we neglect and nobody is talking about that and that the whole church is going that direction doesn't mean that the church is right and when the church discovers that the emphasis of the new testament is going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then we say we're coming back to that there are some people that instead of honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints they want to honestly contend for the singing for the choir for this for that we're going to keep to the bible i said we're going to keep to the bible and it is when we join hearts and hands together and we say this is what the new testament says about planting a church about growing a church about maintaining a church and we put the right emphasis on the right thing then we're able to move forward and this they say the children of Israel in particular they abandoned the way of the lord and then now it says you have robbed me in tithes and offering look at verse 10 bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and probe me now herewith says the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it the lord is saying turn around 
make a change and it is as we make that change and we come back to the bible and we place the first sin falls and then all the other six will follow and then we have appropriate portion of our time appropriate portion of our treasure appropriate portion of our skill appropriate portion of our money and we give what belongs to the lord unto the lord then the lord says he will bless us the lord will bless us i said the lord will bless us then it says in verse 11 really then i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and ye shall not and they shall not ye shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field says the lord of hosts and all the nations all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delight some land says the lord of hosts that reveals to us god's prosperity plan we're going to follow that plan and as we follow that plan and we put forth what god puts forth we put to the background what god puts to the background we exalt what god exalts and then we trample on our feet what god says he doesn't want it is then his prosperity plan will come upon our lives and look at that passage i divide to three points number one the problem and the poverty of the unfaithful the problem and the poverty of the unfaithful and the lord use a particular word look at verse eight will a man rob god the word rob that means to steal will a man steal from god and then he says for yet ye have robbed me you have stolen from me and he said but you say wherein have we robbed thee wherein have we stolen from you and then he says the tithes and offering you have not given me what belongs to me you're stealing from me you're taking something away from me is it possible to steal from god of course yes of course yes is it possible to take something that belongs to god and then bring it to ourselves without taking it to god of course yes look at joshua chapter 7 joshua chapter 7 stealing from god are you stealing from god the honor that belongs to god are you stealing from god the glory that belongs to God. Are you stealing from God the tithes and offering that belongs to God? Are you stealing from God the time that belongs to God? Are you stealing from God the majesty, the exaltation that belongs to God? Are you stealing from God the position that belongs to God only? It says, He robbed him, he stole from him. Joshua chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 11 and verse 12. Israel have sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. When the Lord commands something, and then we rob him of obedience, the stealing in the sight of God, and then we do what he has not commanded. We emphasize what he has not commanded. We give our life, our time, our attention to what he has not commanded. We plan and program what he has not commanded and then we abandon what he has commanded it says they have seen and transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even taken of their cursed sin and have also stolen that's the word is told is told and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff now, do you realize the story we're reading here? This is about Achan. And it's actually Achan alone that stole. But his family knew about it. Other people knew about it. And he just kept quiet. He supported the thief. He supported the one that went against the word of the Lord. You know, sometimes it's like that. That just an Achan is doing something wrong. And then the rest of us, instead of, correct, instead of correcting the Achan, we're supporting the Achan against God. And we're defending the Achan against God. And we're covering up and concealing that Achan against God. And God says, now because of that, Israel has sinned. The whole nation has sinned. They have transgressed my commandment, which I commanded them. They have evil taken up their causes. They have stolen look at verse 12 it says therefore the children of israel could not stand before their enemies you see we are the people that destroy ourselves 
Israel destroy themselves. It shall have been the greatest nation on earth. Which they shall have been the first power, world power, all over the world. And in all their generations. But they were the people that relegated themselves to so the background. Not God. Not even other nations. Not even the nations around them. They were the cause of their own defeat. And many people are the causes of their own defeat. It says... These people, they will not be able to stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy their accursed sin from among you. There are people that instead of making the correction, they will say, well, God will forget about it. It's a temporary thing. Disobedience is not a temporary thing. It's something that God says, you have to correct it. You have to turn around. You have to repent. As you return unto me, only then will I have favor upon you. But starting up, sanctify the people. And say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye have taken away the accursed thing from among you. That means what they are stolen, they need to return, restore unto the Lord. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. The controversy that the Lord had with the children of Israel and the controversy still has with people today when we are not in obedience to the word of the Lord and when what God has commanded we don't want to take care of that he commanded tithes and offering and he said bring that into my house that there will be food in my storehouse and then he says I will bless you says the Lord of hosts and when we don't do that and we're holding and holding it back and keeping each what belongs to the Lord he says that is the reason for our problem and poverty he tells us in proverbs chapter 11 verse 24 proverbs 11 verse 24 there is there is that there is that scattereth and yet increaseth is giving out and giving out and yet is increasing and then it says and there is that which hold, which holdeth more than is meat but it tendereth to poverty is holding back what you should give to god the time you should give to God is holding it back. The talent you should give to God is holding it back. It's stingy with God. It's not giving things out. And it tells us here, there is that withholdeth more than is meet. It's keeping back more than is necessary. It should give one tenth to the Lord and then keep nine over ten for himself he's not doing that and then he says he tenders to poverty he comes to poverty we're looking at proverbs chapter 13 verse 7 proverbs 13 verse 7 there is that maketh himself rich yet has nothing he maketh himself rich yet he has nothing he's holding back his money holding back his tithes Holding back a suffering. Do you realize there's a difference between tithe and offering? There is tithe, one tenth of what you have. There is offering, the free will offering, what you urge. And there are people that only give offering. They don't give tithes. And the offering they give is maybe about one over hundred of what they have. Instead of bringing ten over hundred, that is one tenth. They just bring a little. If you have brought your tithes and offering today to the house of God, you want to worship the Lord with your tithes and offering, then they, they squeeze uh, maybe some little amount of money that cannot buy anything. Then they raise it up and they say they are giving tithes and offering. It says they are withholding from the Lord. There is that maketh himself rich, yet has not.